We're influenced by kind of all modes of culture and, and creative thought. Manufacturing and kind of engineering world that's here in Los Angeles. To me, the more layered, better. And like the odder the layers are and the more unexpected, the better. We think a lot about scale. So thinking about how those layers of time and material and space kind of make our work richer. I'm Rebecca Rudolph, and I'm a partner in Design Bitches. I'm Katherine Johnson, and I am co-founder of Design Bitches, and we're here today at our office in Glassell Park. As a child, I was a bit of an observer. I was always watching space, so I was really interested in the relationship between bodies and space and spaces between people, and also how that relates perhaps to a set, and thought that, oh, maybe architecture could be something that could take all of those things. I studied philosophy undergrad, and I ended up uh, writing a master's thesis on prison architecture and uh, sort of the politics of space. When I got to SciArc, I did not have a lot of knowledge about architecture, what it was about, and what architecture entailed as a profession. The school was really exciting because there was such an opportunity to learn about different ways of making. Uh, I was there at the Marina del Rey School, and you really felt like you could, you know, knock walls down and create sort of experimental spaces in real time. I worked in a wood shop, took photography classes, video editing. All of that was exciting and formative, I would say, in the sense that we got this feeling that architecture was about a lot more than just, you know, drawing plans and section. I actually was part of the class at SciArc, the first class that started in the building downtown. And half of our classes were in trailers in the parking lot. And we spent the first week painting the school, building desks getting to know the building that we were inhabiting, and it felt very much like our own little universe down there. I really went to SciArc at a time where I think it was transitioning from, there was sort of the old school and the new school kind of coming together. The mixing of those two influences, both in like pedagogy and like how you thought about making work is still influential today. I think we think about how things are gonna be used the functionality or the, you know, what works about something that's a really common everyday object is something that we'll think about, but also maybe the, a, a dimension that gives it personality or that adds joy to it or that adds some other element. And then everyday materials are also something that we really work with a lot, both for their sort of psychological associations because everyday materials that we're, we're all used to seeing in different contexts, they have a resonance and we like to play with that and sort of flip things around. If they're known and they're easy to obtain and easy to work with, it can allow us to focus the design effort and experimentation, but we can um, do something really clever with it. I think we care a lot about how architecture affects kind of like the everyday experience. Rather than just incredible moments we have in life, there's also just the everyday like repetitive things and how certain ways you can design or work can affect that. So, and I think LA is a bit of an everyday city where as we wander through the city, we kind of collect different everyday objects just mentally and sort of catalog them and then bring them into the work. Having a variety of experiences within one space is something that we like to try to achieve and playing with those two things together like thinking about a three-dimensional volume and how two-dimensional graphics can modify our like perception of space and like what is flat and what is deep, like your visual perception, but also just kind of your emotional perception in ways. 
rather than seeing it just as purely decorative, it's something that actually changes and maybe from different perspectives. So someone sitting over here might be experiencing this extraordinary convergence while someone else is just seeing a pattern from where they're sitting. We also like incorporating artwork into our spaces and sometimes that's collaborating with other artists to do work on graphics, illustrations, and sometimes we do it ourselves in-house. But that also adds another dimension. business of design bitches is the most challenging project. So it's a, it's a 10 year coming on up to 10 year project and now just the evolution of the business and what we kinds of projects we've started working on as and where we're going. We always say that we do research in real time, mostly through building because we've been building pretty continuously throughout the entire time we've been working together. And our first project was a restaurant. But really we're looking at sort of social interaction and different ways of sitting and different ways of bringing culture into more commercial settings and what does that look like? And then sort of collecting all of this as we build and grow and how that informs totally different types of projects and seeing you know, you know, what we can bring to the next bigger thing. So Nine Dots is a project that we completed recently and it's a STEM education nonprofit. They do tutoring for after school programs, but they also train teachers and educators to go out into schools in the greater LA area and teach STEM education. We completed a project with them that would help them run all of these programs at the same time, simultaneously. So we worked with them and we inserted volumes into the bigger spaces that house some classrooms and some offices. They're really creating this kind of next generation STEM education workforce by training teachers and educators. And it has significant cultural impact because the community comes and interacts directly uh, with the program. The project enabled them to sort of grow their reach, expand their reach, and that's, that's a huge thing in itself. We're working on some projects that are kind of new business models, working with entrepreneurs to look at a variety of different businesses from the like restaurant and food industry, but taken from a different perspective in terms of the sourcing. Now that we've sort of collected, as I said, we've been doing all this real-time research through building and looking at now what happens when we mix some of those programmatic elements together and finding partners who are willing to explore in, in slightly larger scales and slightly more public scales. We're starting construction on the ground up house in Venice that has been in the works for several years. So that's really exciting to sort of see something that we've been working really closely with our client on. They're also creative people, so it's like emerging, melding of creative minds kind of coming together and seeing it take form finally and like really rise out of the ground. I think architecture can be defined in such a broad way and there's room for so many different channels and different paths to take. We're moving into an era where there isn't one style. They all have equal importance or value to building a different kind of culture and just the way that we live and they can all influence one another. I do believe in the importance of actually building something. If what you're interested in doing is creating spaces for people to experience and interact with, then trying that on a one-to-one -one real scale is important. And it can be so simple, getting it sort of out, out of your brain and into the world so that you can see how people interact with it is important.